Today we're going to talk about mutations, and when we're speaking of mutations, we're not necessarily talking about uh, X-Men characters such as Wolverine or Spider-Man or Hulk, all three of uh, some of my favorite superheroes, but we're talking about mutations to the DNA strand. And if you've seen any of these movies, you've seen how their genetic code sometimes gets mutated and results in their superhero abilities. Well, unfortunately, those don't happen in everyday life. But we do have mutations that occur inside our bodies and other organisms. And today we're going to look at some of those different types of uh, mutations to the DNA code. So mutations, what are they? Well, there's two causes of mutations, or two types of mutations. And the first is when DNA fails to copy accurately. It basically, uh, there's an error that occurs while the DNA is copied, it's copied incorrectly, and so it causes a different strand of DNA than the original. That's a mutation. It can be just one nucleotide base, or it can be multiple nucleotide bases. Uh, either way, just a single nucleotide being different from the original strand is technically a mutation. The other way that mutations can occur is if there's some sort of external influence that causes the mutation. Uh, this can be due to chemicals or radiation. After the uh, uh, American military forces dropped the atomic bomb in Japan, uh, I, both of the bombs uh, resulted in both massive destruction, but also the radiation caused uh, numerous mutations, and cancer was probably one of the larger causes of death after the dropping of the bomb. So with our example of radiation, it causes the DNA to break down, and the actual act of rebuilding the DNA um, from the breakdown can occur with errors to the original strand of DNA, and that is also a mutation. And so this is kind of like uh, the example that we see in the superhero movies. Some sort of outside external influence, such as chemicals or radiation, causes some change to the individual's DNA, which in the movies gives them superhero or some really cool super awesome powers. And so here's our original strand of DNA and a correct copy. But in our mutated copy, you can see our original strand. And uh, let's say that purple is re representing adenine. And in our mutant copy, this is representing maybe thymine. And so we've had one nucleotide replaced or changed. And so just by having one nucleotide replaced or changed from the original strand gives us a mutation. And so there's a couple different types of mutations we're going to look at. The first one is a substitution. And a substitution is pretty straightforward. It basically just means what the word says. And it's a mutation that exchanges one base for another. So you can see in our example here, we've got a strand of DNA that's CTGGAG. And in our mutated one, we have CTGGGG. So we've had an adenine replaced by a guanine. And so we're not gaining or we're not losing any nucleotides. We're just exchanging one for another. This is a mutation, and a couple of the different outcomes that can occur are uh, we can have a change, we can change a codon to one that encodes a different amino acid, so we could get a totally different amino acid from that, and it could cause a change to the protein. We could change a codon to one that encodes the same amino acid, which would have no overall effect on the protein, and would thus really not have any effects on the overall production of the protein, and we call this a silent mutation. It's called a silent mutation because it doesn't have any effect on the protein that's produced and the body or the organism is not going to notice any change. The other change that we can have is a change in amino acid coding codon to a single stop codon. This could cause an incomplete protein. So if the nucleotide is changed so that we have a stop codon, meaning three nucleotides together on the messenger RNA strand that tell the uh, ribosome and the tRNA to stop producing the protein, the protein would be cut short or would pre be produced short, and so it would be a stop codon. And so those are the three outcomes that we can have as a substitution. Two of our other types are insertions or deletions. The first insertion is adding, is when extra nucleotides are added into the DNA. So for our example, we have CTGGAG in our original DNA strand. And after insertion, we have CTGGTGGAG. So we've added an extra three nucleotides, a T, G, G, have been added to this original strand of DNA. Now that's going to add, basically, if we add three nucleotides here, that's going to add a whole new amino acid, which is going to cause a uh, different amino acid or um, no amino acid, depending on the nucleotides that are added. And so that's also going to change the protein. 
Um, it's going to change the sequence of amino acids, and so it could overall change the protein. Our second type uh, in this slide is deletion. And deletion is basically just the opposite of insertion. This is when we're actually losing nucleotides from our strand of DNA. So in our example, we've got C, T, G, G, A, G. Well, we lose these two guanines, and so our new strand of DNA is C, T, A, G. And so we've lost two nucleotides in this case, and so we're losing, um, we're losing nucleotides, which causes it to be a deletion. Again, this can also cause a different amino acid or no amino acid to, produ uh, to be produced, which is going to cause a change to the overall protein. Our last type of mutation is called, oops, go back one. Our last type of mutation is called a frame shift. And uh, insertions and deletions are basically types of frame shift. And these alter the gene so that its message basically doesn't make sense. Uh, for example, let's say we had a pretend DNA sequence. This is just kind of an example here. Let's say we had uh, a series of nucleotides in threes. So we have the fat cat sat. Okay, this is obviously not the same. Um, nucleotides that we would have in DNA or RNA, but this kind of help illustrates the point. If we lose one of these nucleotides, so if we have a deletion mutation and we lose the T, our new strand of nucleotides um, basically reads as gibberish. Uh, I can't really read this. They're not real words besides at. And so this doesn't make sense. And that's basically what a frame shift mutation is. Uh, it's an insertion or deletion that causes the strand of DNA uh, to be totally mixed up. Um, it generates mixed up proteins that are useless as are useless words here. And so these are called frame shift mutations because they totally shift uh, the strand of DNA. And these uh, deletions and insertions are types of frame shift mutations because they're altering the DNA code so that the sequence of nucleotides doesn't make sense. It doesn't code for anything. And so this is obviously going to have some major uh, negative impacts on the protein that would have been produced because now we have this new strand of DNA that's completely useless. It's gibberish. And so here are some more examples. We have a, a normal gene. A point mutation has also caused a substitution, as we talked about. We have a deletion, an insertion, and a frame shift. And so to get some practice and to help identify the different types of mutations and to predict the outcomes, uh, we have uh, a couple of different examples here, one, two, and three. The first one uh, we have on the top, we have a strand of DNA uh, for all three of these in each of our different examples. Here's our first strand of DNA, our second, and our third. And then below that, we have a strand of DNA that has been mutated. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, and I'd like you to take a few minutes to try to identify what type of mutation each of these is representing, and then what would be some possible outcomes to the mutation. Go ahead and pause your video, uh, take a second to try to figure these out, and then we'll continue in just a second. And so hopefully you had a chance to work through those and try to figure them out and hopefully identify that this first one is a substitution and it would probably result in a different amino acid. Our second one is a frame shift deletion because we've actually lost a nucleotide. And so it's going to make a non-sense protein. It's not going to create the protein that originally was intended uh, because we've lost uh, a nucleotide. And then our last one is a frame shift insertion because it's also going to produce a nonsense protein. Uh, we've added a new nucleotide, and so it's going to kind of throw out of whack, uh, make gibberish of our original strand of DNA. And so that is mutations. Uh, we'll talk about more chromosomal mutations when we get to genetics. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to focus on the nucleotides, and that is mutations.